Hi, hi, Jakey Steve here, the long-haired freaky dude. Today I'm going to review the Socratic dialogue Lachis by Plato, translated by Benjamin Jowett. This dialogue ponders what courage is. A man named Lysimachus wants to know if his sons should be trained to fight in armor. And he leaves it to Lachis, Nicias, and Socrates to discuss. So essentially, he wants parental advice from Socrates. Nicias' argument is that it should be taught because it develops military training and prepares the soldier for battle. Lachis, on the other hand, argues that it shouldn't be taught because it can't be taught. He thinks that armor fighting is innate and natural, and trying to teach it only causes foolish mishaps. None of these matters of fence have ever been distinguished in war. There's been a certain fatality about them. I suppose that much is true. War can kill anyone, even the bravest, strongest, and seemingly most trained of men. So if you're familiar with psychology, this is essentially a battle between nature and nurture. Lachis says that the fighting is in our nature, while Nicaea says that it must be taught, it must be learned, planted within the user. It is our nurture. Lysimachus wants to see who Socrates agrees with, so that there may be a majority decision on what is best. <laughs> this opinion, of course, incurs the wrath of Socrates' inquisitive scrutiny. What? Are you going to accept the opinion of the majority? Why, yes, Socrates. What else am I to do? Despicable. If everyone in a democracy thought that way, then we might as well just be an autocracy. Where there'd be no difference between the two, you gotta form your own opinions. Don't just go with the trend. Please, think for yourself. Be influenced, but not, not controlled. A good decision is based on knowledge, not numbers. That can still be collective knowledge. So long as each part is thought through it for himself. So Lysimachus then asks Socrates to question each of them so that they may uh, critique each viewpoint. <laughs> now Cius then says this comical content advisory about asking Socrates to question for Lysimachus is unfamiliar of the nature of Socrates. You clearly show that you've never known Socrates because you seem not to be aware that anyone who has an intellectual affinity to Socrates and enters into conversation with him is liable to be drawn into an argument, and whatever subject he may start, he will be continually carried round and round by him, until at last he finds that he has to give an account of both his present and past life, and when he is once entangled, Socrates will not let him go until he has completely and thoroughly sifted him. It's funny that he felt the need to give that warning. But it's also a fantastic description of what Socrates is capable of doing. Lachis agrees to be questioned slashed mentally drawn and quartered. There is no harm in being reminded of any wrong thing which we are or have been doing. Reflection is essential to development. Critique is necessary if we are to develop and grow into better people. Sometimes critique hurts, but such is the nature of growing pains. As the lawmaker Solon once said, he who does not fly from reproof will be sure to take more here or his afterlife. So Socrates begins his questioning, and as always, he wants to start from the root of the matter and work his way up to the actual proposed question. Before they can advise on the art of teaching fighting with armor, they have to first decide what is actually being taught. What is fighting with armor? They decide that it's bravery and courage. And from here we get a line of questioning to figure out what courage actually is. Their first matters pertain to only war, but Socrates is quick to check that courage can apply to other matters as well. There can be a courageous statesman, for example. So what is the common quality between all things courageous? Locke has proposed that courage is being able to endure something of which the endurer has little knowledge of. A soldier who has little knowledge of war but is still able to do incredible things would thus be considered courageous. Socrates argues, however, that there can be foolish endurance, and this, of course, is not considered courageous. So Lachis then goes on to propose that perhaps courage is wise endurance, good endurance. Socrates says to this, Every man is good in that which he is wise, and bad in that which he is unwise. So this sort of contradicts Locke's initial statement that courage is enduring something with little knowledge. For otherwise, there would be no good courage. It would imply that courage is a type of wisdom. Nicaea proposes that courage is a type of knowledge that inspires fear or confidence. Courage is the knowledge of the grounds for fear and hope. The first critique is this. If courage is knowledge of these things, 
If this is so, then some lions who have more courage than humans are then said to also have more knowledge and wisdom than humans. But this is not so. Nicaea says that lions are different because they are ignorant of danger and are therefore incapable of courage. Fair enough. Whether or not lions are actually completely ignorant of danger, I know not, but I assume that they should at least have some understanding of the matter. But hey, it's BC time. Give them a break. So, it's established that fearlessness is not necessarily courage. Courage is knowledge of fear and hope, not lack thereof. And it's further established that fear is future or expected evil, and hope is future or expected good. But Socrates argues that courage can be of uh, also present and past goods and evils. So if courage is past, present, and future good, then courage must be good itself. It must be a virtue itself. But it is not. It is only a part, so this definition turns out to be contradictory as well. Both Nicaea's and Locke's propositions are proved wrong, or they, they are proved out fallacies by Socrates. So in typical Platonic dialoguean fashion, in the end we neither know whether kids should be taught to fight in armor, nor do we know what courage is. We haven't learned anything. But we have learned what courage is not, and that is a very important step in coming closer to understanding what it is. In the end, the men conclude that they should go back to school, even though they are old men, and that they should continue to learn things because they are ignorant of many things. Let us then, regardless of what may be said of us, make the education of the youth our own education. So here's just a few more quotes which made me think. A man whose actions do not agree with his words is an annoyance to me. No one likes a hypocrite. But at the same time, pretty much everyone's a hypocrite. You know how hard it is to live exactly by one's words? Impossibly hard. But we should strive to be as congruous as possible. And another quote from Solon. I would fain grow old learning many things. Always keep learning. It is a lifelong pursuit. Lifelong endeavor. <laughs> And the humor! There always seems to be some kind of comedic relief in Socratic dialogues. When Nicias begins explaining his theory of courage, Locus interjects, That's silly! But Socrates, in his sassy self, sasses back, Suppose that we instruct instead of abusing him. It does no good to belabor the opposition, for as Locus found out, he was just as contradictory as Nicias was. Rather than we should work towards constructively criticizing ideas rather than simply tearing them down. Leave your friends' minds truer and stronger rather than a useless pile of rubble. Work to correct and strengthen their problems rather than just tearing everything down. Let them see where they are wrong. But not long after, Socrates says this equally degrading and equally funny thing to Locus. What is Locus saying, Nicias? He appears to be saying something of importance. Ah, Socrates' sass is legendary. The look on Locke's face says that he means something important, but his words just can't convey the idea. So my questions to you are, what is courage and what is courage not? Feel free to uh, start a discussion in the comment section below, however vulgar you want to be or however opinionated you want to be. It is free speech down there after all. Well, I'm Jakey Steve, the long-haired freaky dude. Thank you for watching this book review. If you'd like to read uh, other works of philosophy, tragedies, plays, literature, science, or math, I might as well uh, suggest checking out the Great Books Challenge. I'm sure it's something that you would love to do. If you want to see other great things like typewriter tutorials, I'd bang into classical music or how to cook then please check out my channel and hit the subscribe button. There will be many, many more great videos in the future. I'm Jake Steve. Thank you for watching. 